Hi, everybody. Coming at you today with another live uh, webinar here where we wanted to dive into a topic a little more deeper. And today I realized one topic we've never really dived into too aggressively is the basic chiropractic 101. Why do people go to a chiropractor? I know a lot of people click on my videos and maybe they've never gone to a chiropractor. Now, if you go back and watch some of our other live webinars, other webinars that we do in the past, you'll see that we get into very many topics. We do some research review and we really dive into why people do this or why people say chiropractic for that or how chiropractic helps with this or that. So today I'm, you know, I'm Dr. Brent Holtzfuss, chiropractor here at Holtzfuss Rockford Chiropractic Clinic. And I wanted to spend a, a little bit of time with you today to kind of, if you're thinking about going to a chiropractor or if you, Maybe you know someone who you think could, could help them chiro need chiropractic care, but don't know really how to explain them what we do. I wanted to make this little video to kind of break down some of the science of what we do, some of the research of what we do, why we do it, and who comes. So, you know, kind of like a chiropractic 101, like the basic stuff. I know I get a little bit more advanced in some of my talks. So that's the goal to this uh, webinar is to spend some time with you go over chiropractic, how it works, how it doesn't work, why people see chiropractic care and what chiropractic care is all about and who qualifies as a chiropractic patient and uh, this kind of how we can do things for you. So without further ado, I'd like to start off with a quick little beginner's video here with some of the research. And I do my webinars. I, I, use a, uh, I work with Dr. Hattie Havoc. She's a researcher out of New Zealand and she presents us lots of cool stuff. So I'm going to kind of show you some of her stuff as we go. So let's dive in here and take a look at one of Dr. Havoc's videos. If you're watching this video, you are probably curious about chiropractic care and how it can help you and your family. So let's explore what chiropractic is all about and how it works. A chiropractor is a healthcare professional who specializes in the health and function of the spine and nervous system. Because of this focus on the spine, many people think chiropractors can only help with problems such as back pain, neck pain, and headaches. And it is true that chiropractors can often help with these things, but there is so much more to chiropractic than just pain. Chiropractic care is really about total health and well-being. It's about helping people to feel great and get the most out of life by functioning at their optimal potential. The spine is there to protect the spinal cord, which is part of the central nervous system. The spine is like a set of armor made up of segments so that it can bend and move naturally with the body. A spinal segment consists of two vertebra and the joints that connect them. There is a disc between each vertebra that acts as a cushion. Underneath that armor, a whole lot is happening. Messages travel from around the body up the spinal cord and into the brain. The brain processes those messages and sends replies back down the spinal cord to tell the body how to respond. The central nervous system is one big information highway and it carries vital messages to every part of your body. Sometimes the wear and tear of everyday life can impact the spine and cause spinal segments to move in a way that is different to normal in a dysfunctional way. That wear and tear can happen gradually, such as from bad posture, or it can happen suddenly, which is common with sports injuries. And because of the close relationship between the spine and the nervous system, everyday strains can actually impact the flow of information and communication between the brain and the body. Messages may not be delivered to the brain, or they may be inaccurate. When that miscommunication occurs due to abnormal movements of the spine, chiropractors call this a vertebral subluxation or a chiropractic subluxation. You might hear it again from your chiropractor, so now you know what it means. By making fast, gentle adjustments to the spine, chiropractors restore its natural movement. If the central nervous system is like the engine of your body, a chiropractor acts like a mechanic, tuning the spine and central nervous system so that your body can run like a race car. Just keep in mind that as you are adjusted, you may hear a popping sound that can seem a bit strange. In fact, it's completely harmless. It's just the release of gas from between spinal segments, and it's no more significant 
than any other release of gas from the body. So are you ready to supercharge your engine? All right, so I hope that, that answers some of your questions right there. Yeah, so when you come to a chiropractor, what we're going to do is we're going to look to see how your spine looks. We're going to take some extras of your spine, look at it from front to back and side to side and see what's going on. We're also going to see how you walk, how you sit, how you lay on our tables and evaluate your posture. Just like the video talked about, the posture is really, really important to us. You know, when we see how your spine moves or doesn't move, we can make assessments on how your nervous system is impaired by that or not impaired by that. Uh, so that's some of the things that we look at to try to get a better feeling of what's going on with your spine. Um, so if you have any questions about that, the coverage will go over with you. One of the things we try to do a lot of times, we try to look at your spine and try to figure out like, um, hang on, the video is being a little jumpy here. All right, there we go. Sorry about that. So we try to look at your spine, try to figure out how you're moving or not moving. Then what we can do is we, we take your x-rays and we see where you're misaligned and then we compare that to your nerve chart. So if we see a misalignment at the C5, we know or the C6, we know those go to these two fingers right here as we call your six shooter. So when we see those misaligned, we know that it could be possibly having problems with this part of your hand. But we also know those nerves also go to your thyroid. So it's not uncommon for someone who has had problems with this part of their hand to also have issues with their thyroid. Now those chiropractic fixed thyroids, no. Does chiropractic fix this part of your hand? No. Chiropractic adjustments are just meant to make your neck move again and make it the vertebrae move in order to get rid of what was causing the interference in the first place so the nervous system can go back to doing its regular job. That's what chiropractic does. So when you come in the chiropractor, we'll do exams, we'll do x-rays, we'll take a good look at you, see what's happening, and kind of put the whole piece together. I hope that makes sense. Now, how do you know when it's time to go to a chiropractor? How do you know this is a good time for me to come in and get adjusted? This is the time for me to get evaluated? How do we know when it's the right time or I'm going to the right doctor? Let's, let's dive into another video here to go over some symptoms that people come in for. If you are visiting your chiropractor today because you have a symptom such as pain, it is important to understand that troublesome symptoms don't appear out of thin air. They build up over time, like the analogy of straws on a camel's back. Hundreds of straws are stacked up over time, yet with the addition of the thousandth tiny straw, the camel's back suddenly breaks. It's the same with symptoms. The problem can build up unnoticed over time, then suddenly symptoms make themselves known in a big way. A symptom may only be the tip of the iceberg, with a much bigger problem lying under the surface. After all, a symptom is just a symptom. It's not the cause. Symptoms are a bit like the fire alarm going off to warn you that there is a problem. The fire alarm is not the problem, the fire is. So don't turn off the alarm and ignore the problem. Go find the cause and put out the fire. For a chiropractor to help you, it may take a number of visits. If your problem took time to build up to the level that it is today, more often than not, it will take time to resolve it too. It's also important to understand the symptoms may be due to dysfunction in a part of the spine that seems unrelated to the problem area. Here's an example. It may be that you have pain in your left knee. It's hard to imagine that this pain could have anything to do with your spine. But if your spine is not moving properly, it may be interrupting the flow of information from your leg to your brain and back again. And because of this, your leg may be receiving faulty messages from your brain, which means that your knee moves in a less than ideal way. And poor movement sustained over time can often create an imbalance in your body that may cause pain. Remember that your body is one big interconnected system no part of it operates in isolation. The objective of chiropractic care is to restore healthy communication throughout your body and to maintain this communication over time, leading to better function, less accidents and a healthier you.
So let's talk about the symptoms like they talked about. They might just be the tip of the iceberg. There might be bigger things going on. I'm going to go back to talking about the knee pain you described. As a chiropractor, there's lots of different ways I've seen knee pain presented here in the office. One really common way is to have a rotated pelvis. If, you're, if your hips are rotated and they're misaligned, that puts a lot of stress on your knee. So you can have a lot of work done to your knee to find out nothing's really making it better until you get the pelvis realigned. You get the pelvis realigned and it goes away. I've also had people come in with whiplashes and they have a whiplash to neck injury and they go back and forth and they're having knee pain after the whiplash. Now, what could this have to do with that? Well, the two bones in your neck um, can, get, can get misaligned, and get stuck and get subluxated, like we talked about in the first video. Your spinal cord comes down nice and straight, but right there at C5, C6, it gets wide and gets narrow again. Now, the outside diameter of your spinal cord innervates your lower extremities. So if you have an injury at C5, C6, it can put pressure on the spinal cord, the outside of the spinal cord, which innervates your knee. So it's really possible to have knee pain from having a whiplash. We've seen it cleared up here more than once. And the other thing, too, is a thing called the writing reflex. The writing reflex is really easy. Basically, it says our eyes will always stay level no matter what. So if you were to hurt your lower back and have to lean away from the small spot, you would self-correct up here. So if I was to do something where I hurt my upper back, where it kind of tilted like this, it's possible my pelvis could counter-rotate. And now my pelvis is rotated, and that would put pressure on my knee. So how do I get rid of the pressure on the knee? Well, I have to get rid of the problem up here before I get rid of the problem in my knee. And that's kind of what chiropractors look at. So when you come in with a symptom of having knee pain, but we know so many different ways to look at the spine and analyze you to try to figure out what the problem is. Now here at our clinic, we, we don't guess. We, we take x-rays, we do exams, and we check out every spot because we don't know which one's a chicken and which one's the egg. So we go ahead and take care of all the spots that we see all at the same time because we want to get you better as soon as possible, knowing that all those different causes can cause that issue. Another common one is a headache. A lot of people get really bad headaches and they come to see us. And there's so many different causes for headaches, so many different areas that can stem from. But through chiropractic, we're able not to look at the symptom of the headache and say, oh, you have a headache, then you must need this adjustment. When we see you have a headache, we take our time and we analyze your spine, looking at all the different possible causes and reasons someone could be having a headache. And then through chiropractic care, we try to address all the reasons that could be causing the alarm to go off by finding the fire, like the video talked about. So that's what we usually do. So you'll come in here for your first visit. We'll do x-rays. We'll do exams like we talked about. And we'll try to find the root cause of those symptoms and address those root causes. And sometimes they're not here. Sometimes we'll find out that maybe you've got a, um, a really bad foot and you have a foot injury and you're limping on your foot really bad. And you have to go see a podiatrist to get your foot fixed before we can get your spine fixed. And that's the case. We'll refer you out to our friends who do podiatry. Uh, we have lots of friends in town. Basically, because of these guys over here, the ice hogs, we take care of them. And when you take care of a hockey team, you need lots of different orthopedic doctors and other people like that. So we have the ability to refer you out where needed and then maybe have you come back afterwards. We also have people that maybe have are walking around with a walking boot on. Now you're walking around with a walking boot on, you're going to rotate your pelvis again. And it causes lower back pain. So you get your walking boot off and now you've got knee pain. So we see all kinds of different things. When's a good time to come see a chiropractor? Well, we like to see it before the symptoms start, but if you're starting to experience some health problems, you're not really getting the answers you need. It's, it's time to come in and talk to us when we can start to look at you. Now, a lot of people are hesitant to come see us, and they always ask us the same question. But well, if I come see you, how long do I have to come? What, what, I mean, what, do I have to come over and over again? Can you guys just get it fixed one time? What does it take? I've done several little videos on this topic. But before we dive into my videos, I want to dive into one that I could have again, again about how often you should come based on the science and the research. So let me pull back to having video and let's take another watch. When you first see your chiropractor, you may be among the many people who ask, how often do I need to come? Often the answer you may want to hear is once. But chiropractic care, like most things that are really good for us, rarely makes a long-term difference to your health and wellness after just one visit. One reason for this is that it usually takes years for the problem to develop that motivates someone to first see a chiropractor, and it can take many visits to the chiropractor to correct that problem. One way of looking at it is that it can be like the thousandth straw that breaks the camel's back. 
So a problem can build up day after day as you sit hunched over your desk, or bend and twist as you lift, or tense up as you deal with your daily stress. And then one day you bend to tie your shoelaces and all of a sudden something hurts. You can rest assured that tying your shoelaces isn't what caused the problem. It's simply the thousandth straw that broke the camel's back, and that's why you're hurting. There will usually be changes to the way the supporting muscles in your spine work that build up over time until the muscles can't cope anymore and symptoms appear. So seeing your chiropractor can be a little bit like going to the gym. It takes time, frequency and follow-up. Working with you to correct the problem and help your brain and muscles in your spine to communicate or talk with each other again so that you can regain the stability that you need to function properly and resolve your aches and pains. But how long will this take and how often do you need to be checked by your chiropractor? Well, everybody is different, so your chiropractor will be guided by their clinical experience and what your goals are when they recommend a care plan for you. A new research study was recently published that suggests that in the early stages of chiropractic care, the more often you get adjusted, the better the results you enjoy. And this can also be better for you in the long term as well. In the study that was conducted by scientists in America, they looked at 256 people who had chronic regular headaches and divided them into groups who either received chiropractic care once a week or twice a week or three times a week for up to six weeks. Or they received no chiropractic care at all and instead were given light massages over the same six-week period. Previous studies have shown that people with this kind of headache often respond well to chiropractic care. So the scientists in this study were most interested in how many times per week that it was best for the patients to get chiropractic care. They looked at how many days a week a patient suffered from headaches at the end of the study, and whether any changes in headache frequency between the groups was still there up to a year later. What they found was that the patients who were seen by their chiropractor the most regularly, so up to three times a week, had fewer headaches than those who were seen once or twice a week, and they were much better than the patients who received no chiropractic care at all. And in fact, after one year, the patients that had been seen three times a week had more than three fewer headaches per month compared to patients who only received a light massage. So these effects obviously lasted. This study was done in people with chronic headaches, so we can't be sure if the same differences occur in people with other problems who see a chiropractor. A similar study in patients with chronic low back pain did find that people who were adjusted more often had the best results, but the results weren't as clear as this study done in patients with headaches. What these studies suggest is that seeing a chiropractor more often when you begin care has real beneficial long-term effects to the way your spine and nervous system works. But how much you benefit may depend on what's wrong with your spine when you begin care. So when you go and see your chiropractor, know that their recommendations for your plan of care is based on what their clinical experience tells them is best for you and that the research suggests that more frequent adjustments has the biggest positive impact on your health and wellness. All right, so how do we know how long you have to come? Well, the x-rays, again, are a huge tool. We see lots of arthritis, we see lots of thin discs, we know problems have been there for a really, really long time. If we don't see that, then we know the problem hasn't been there as long. You get better quicker. If we see a really bad curve to your spine, if we see a lot of twisting and, and the open wedges between the vertebrae, it's going to take longer to fix it. If it's not that rotated, if it's not that crooked, well, you get better faster. We also kind of do what judgment call on you through our examinations too. If you look like somebody who exercises every day, eats right, has a good positive attitude, you get better quicker. And if you're somebody who doesn't have those things, the opposite of those things, if you can tell me um, who has the best fast food at each restaurant, the best meal at each restaurant they get, it's going to take longer. If you know all the um, organic farms in the area, it's going to take less time. So those are all the things that we weigh into our factors. So. 
other times people will call the office and say, hey, I want to come in. I want to start chiropractic care. I'm having lower back pain. How many times do I have to come? And obviously over the telephone, we have no idea. No idea at all. Not that we get to talk to you, get your history, get some information on you. Can we actually put the puzzle pieces together? So simply calling us on the phone and asking, tell me a condition that you have. I have brachial radiculitis in my hand. How many times do I have to come? We will never know the answer to that. No chiropractor does unless they actually take their time and do their examinations and take their x-rays. Um, so what we do is we come in, you meet up with us. We'll do all that stuff with you. We'll give you an adjustment. And then we'll wait and see how you respond because we don't have enough time to hang out with you to know all your habits and patterns. But when we see how you respond, then we'll custom tailor a care plan exactly for you. And our staff will go over all your insurance and all your costs and all the responsibilities you have. But we are also really good here at giving you homework because if you go back to doing the same things that you were doing prior to coming in, we should expect the same results. So even though you might not be able to change your job, change your career, change other things, there are extra exercises and stretches and things like that we can add to your everyday routine, which should help you get better and hold your adjustment and do better longer. Now, do you have to come in the rest of your life? Do you have to brush your teeth the rest of your life? You probably should, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, you can wait till you have a problem with your cavity scope. You can wait till you have a problem giving us a call. That's up to you. Now, if you do the maintenance care, how often do you have to come? Well, again, how often do you have to come? What's your job? Are you a Rockford Ice Hawk? Are you out playing high quality NHL hockey every day getting crushed against the boards? Or do you have a job where you're a park ranger and you're walking through nature every day? You can probably imagine those two different careers would have two different um, care plans based on the stresses they add to their lives. Uh, so those are all custom tailored to you. And we try to see how long we can go in between your visits for you where we're not causing uh, harm. But if you choose to want to call us when you have a problem and come back in and get seen and then wait to get another problem, you can do that too. Um, you know, I tell everybody my, my grandpa served over in Germany in World War II, so you can do whatever you want. That's our job to give you our recommendations, though. And that's what we'll definitely do for you. So if you have any questions about whether or not chiropractic care is right for you, whether or not you should become a chiropractic patient, let us know. If you have x-rays or an exam or you've been another chiropractor or another doctor and you like to just take a look at those records, well, we have the right to pull those records and get those records for you before we meet. If you have insurance questions, you can call my office and they'll check your insurance benefits for you before you come. And we'll try to investigate everything for you and everything you have. Um, so just give us a call. Let us know. We're here to educate you. We've been here since 1949, serving this community, doing the best we can to give quality, ethical, high-quality chiropractic care. So go ahead and reach out to us. I'm going to finish with one last video of who sees a chiropractor, and then we'll finish with that one. And uh, again, if you have any questions, just don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you later. Who sees a chiropractor? More and more people are now going to see a chiropractor. But you may be surprised to know why chiropractic care is becoming so much more popular. Most people know that if you have a sore back or sore neck or suffer from headaches, that a chiropractor may help you. But there are so many more reasons that people go and see a chiropractor. A recent study found that about one in four Americans have visited a chiropractor at some time in their life. And almost 20 million Americans see a chiropractor each year. The reason people in the study gave for going to see a chiropractor were really interesting. Although back and neck pain was the main specific health problem people gave for seeing a chiropractor, almost half of the chiropractic patients said they went for general wellness or disease prevention. So they saw a chiropractor because they wanted to function at their best. And about one in every six chiropractic patients said they saw their chiropractor to improve their athletic or sports performance or to improve their energy. When they were asked what chiropractic care had helped them with, about two-thirds of the chiropractic patients said chiropractic care had helped them to improve their overall health and made them feel better. And almost half of them said it helped them to sleep better or to reduce stress and to relax. Over 30% of those seeing chiropractors said it helped them by making it easier to cope with their health problems, and it gave them a sense of control over their health. 
Some even said it improved their relationship with others or improved attendance at work or school. And some felt that chiropractic motivated them to eat healthier and exercise more regularly. If people went to see a chiropractor because their back or neck or joints were sore, about two-thirds of them said that chiropractic care helped them a great deal with these problems. And only a handful of them said that it didn't help at all. One other really cool finding in this study was that most chiropractic patients said they felt that chiropractic care helped them with the cause of their health problems instead of just treating their symptoms. This is really important. Symptoms are a bit like a fire alarm. The fire alarm is not the problem, the fire is. The alarm only goes off to let you know that something is not right. So if you take drugs or medication to mask your pain or symptoms, it's a bit like taking the battery out of the fire alarm. It's much better to take care of the cause of the problem straight away. This is what your chiropractor is aiming to do. So why do so many people go and see a chiropractor? It's not just because they get a lot of help if they're suffering from pain or other health problems. They go because they want to perform better on the sporting field and athletic track. They want to sleep better. They want to deal with stress better or to be able to relax. They go because they simply want to improve their overall health and function at their best. Almost 50% of those asked said they went to see their chiropractor for maintaining their health and well-being. So have you seen your family chiropractor lately? Do you need help with a health problem? Would you like to cope better with your health concerns? Do you want to sleep better, feel better, have more energy, reduce stress, relax, or simply maintain your health and well-being? Give it a go and join the millions of others who claim to get these benefits from chiropractic care. Thank you.